about the internet of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. Moving the whole revolution forward. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of 24 Hour Script. Let's get right into this very bullish episode. Ripple documentation using on-demand liquidity. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in because this one is going to be absolutely crazy. We talked about this and now it's out. So how is this going to be utilized? Are banks going to be holding XRP? Account funding flow. Prior to sending institution initiating payments through on-demand liquidity, Ripple will fund the sending institution's XRP wallet with a predetermined amount of XRP. In order for Ripple to pre-fund the XRP, the sending institution must onboard with a Ripple entity and enter into a commit to sell agreement to permit them to hold XRP owned by Ripple. This is crazy. So the XRP and escrow, we will never see. This is, I can't, I don't even know what to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna break down a scenario here where banks are holding XRP, but keep in mind the math here is 100 billion, 99 billion XRP circulating. I chose 99 billion because I know it's 100, but Right now we're at 99 billion and some change. So you want to round it up and bring the number lower because it's more realistic. Take a listen to this breakdown. And then after that, after your mind, if your mind hasn't blown up by then, uh, stick to the very end because we're gonna get into some UN information that is developing and I'm talking about the XRP ledger. When XRP reached three, $3.38, the volume was only 2.3 billion. Market cap of 130 billion. And this is where things are gonna get extremely, extremely crazy. The market cap that's being based off on today's calculations is gonna be $10 trillion. And that is so conservative because there are more than $5 quadrillion floating out there in value. And when the demand comes for XRP, and I'm gonna let Brad Garlinghouse take it over here for a moment and I'll be right back. Institutions, you know, Joey and I sat in a meeting not that long ago with, you know, some of the, the largest institutional money in the world trying to get smart about crypto. They owned zero on that day. I don't know if they do today. But as they enter the market, you have fixed supply, increasing demand. You don't have to go to MIT to know what's gonna happen. We got fixed supply, ladies and gentlemen, and everything is calculated in this video. Like every XRP is in here. So XRP at $100, 40 banks, 99 billion XRP circulating with $10 trillion market cap. Market cap will always be total circulating of XRP and the value, okay, always. That being said, each bank would get 2.5 billion XRP valued at 250 billion in sovereign currency at the time, whatever that's worth. 2.5 billion into 40 banks is absolutely nothing. Ripple is partnered on a conservative scale with more than 300 banks. And we're talking about a $10 trillion market cap with a volume of 3.5 trillion and we're getting $100. Things are only gonna get better because we're gonna go on to 96 banks, $10 trillion market cap because we're gonna keep the price of XRP stable Okay, can't be volatile, but we're gonna move all these payments at a fixed price, okay? I'm just being very conservative and you guys print the bigger picture here. I'm just giving you, giving you guys the fundamentals of why and how XRP, in my opinion, not financial advice, will reach $100, 1 trillion percent. So that divided up to 96 banks, folks gives each bank 1 billion XRP valued at you know $100 each. They only have $100 billion that I'm working with. Okay, yes, we know XRP settles in five seconds, but ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about 
Okay, this is where a lot of people get lost. We're talking about value being moved instantly around the world 24 seven, every single day, nonstop. It needs to maintain its liquidity, okay? Please get that in your mind. And now this is the part where you guys have not seen before. Okay, this is gonna be absolutely crazy. This is where your jaws are gonna drop. So hold on to your jaw. Don't let it hit the floor because ladies and gentlemen, we got 150 banks here, not even countering the fact, the DTC, anything else. This is very, very, very conservative. $10 trillion market cap, 99 billion XRP circulating, XRP at $100. Each bank would hold approximately 660 million. Keep in mind, our XRPs that we hold are also in this calculation. So you know the demand for this. But as they enter the market, you have fixed supply, increasing demand. You don't have to go to MIT to know what's gonna happen. Right? 150 banks all divided up within the 99 billion XRP, each bank will receive 660 million XRP valued at $66 billion at the time, given the value of the dollar or whatever it's going based off of, ladies and gentlemen. You guys know what I'm trying to say here. Do you see how this, it does not make sense? It could stay at $100 stable value, but there's gonna be a moment where the value must rise, ladies and gentlemen. The demand is gonna increase. That is absolutely crazy, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot believe it. Now, on to Exchange, okay? I don't know if I pronounced that right, I hope I did. The next video you're about to see is Stephen Witt, COO and founder. This is backed by the UN. Utility-based NFT solving real-world problems in carbon markets. Carbon markets are gonna be huge. One emerging leader in blockchain and carbon markets is Exchange.com a UN-backed climate-focused fintech that aims to bring greater transparency, accountability, and trust to carbon markets. If you guys didn't know, they're partnered with Ripple. Exchange.com chose to build on the XRP ledger given its performance, scalability, and inherently green attributes. The XRP ledger was built with the sustainability in mind and is one of the first major carbon neutral blockchains. Take a listen to this video, folks, and then take a listen to Glenn Hutchins, about the underlying protocol, everything is coming into light. Ironically, and certainly in some circles, has a huge degree of mistrust um, as a technology. I mean, I, I'm still so surprised. Again, COP26, the only mention of blockchain as a uh, innovative solution in in sustainability was as you know the worst for the environment and the least clean. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Bitcoin, yeah. Why were you yeah, exactly. Bitcoin, yeah. That, yeah. That's the, why we, we chosen to work, uh, uh, build this on the XRP ledger instead. So we looked at uh, the right like uh, way to, to, to issue and, 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 and implement the token taxonomy framework on, on a carbon neutral uh, blockchain. So basically uh, it, it all depends on, on which protocol you prefer. And especially what uh, Sammy was mentioning, yeah, Bitcoin is uh, um, uh, the biggest uh, polluter out there, uh, but there are alternatives. So yeah, it it's all depends on, on which protocol you prefer. But the most important piece, which is one that people aren't focusing on, is the protocol. The underlying protocol by which we agree to do these, to conduct these transactions. So you use a series of protocols every day and you don't even think about it. You don't think about the internet protocol. You don't think about the simple mail technology protocol. You don't think about the file transfer protocol. You don't think about the high text translation protocol. I go through, right? You just, you, you just make use of the technology and the protocols make it work. The people who really understand what's going on with digital currencies understand that putting these protocols in place, the blockchain protocol, the Ethereum protocol, the, uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, the uh, XR, the Ripple protocol, and then enabling those protocols to cause transactions to occur, uh, and then those tra and those transactions can be defined very broadly as not just moving same things of value, but anything that's got an information content. It's 2023, and everything is adding up perfectly. Ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and we will be back with another episode. We started building RippleNet with a 
thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.